Hi there, and welcome to this look at the 14-day weather prospects. It is currently very cold right across the UK, and in places there has been significant snowfall. This picture was taken in Suffolk, and some of the worst conditions have been in East Anglia and areas to the southeast of London. Now, is a cold set to stay? Well, probably in the short term, but in the medium term, things are very uncertain. I will focus on those rather than gloss over them, but to begin with, I'm going to take a look at the next few days. So this is a picture at 12 GMT, Tuesday the 9th of February. Um, what we can see is the UK here under a very cold easterly air stream, and that's bringing, bringing in quite a lot of snow showers. The extent of them is not quite as widespread as this chart from the GFS model shows, but nonetheless there are many around, particularly in eastern Britain. I'll play the sequence so we can see what happens in the short term. Here we go, this is in three hour steps, and I'll just stop it there. 06 GMT, Thursday the 11th of February. By then, things are starting to change a little. It's still a very cold picture, but you can see there are fewer snow showers there. Winds have gone round in the east. Winds have gone into more of a uh, southeasterly direction. And we're starting to see milder air associated with this area of low pressure in the Atlantic trying to push up from the southwest. Let's see how that progresses. Okay, so I'll now stop it at 8 in GMT, Friday the 12th of February. And at that point we can see that high pressure uh, centred over Scandinavia, still feeding in very cold air across most of the UK. Um, and it's, it's pr predominantly dry by then. So let's go into the weekend. And this is really where things start to become quite uncertain. I'll stop it here at 18 GMT on Saturday the 13th of February. And at this stage, weather fronts from the Atlantic are beginning to encroach into the UK. They're bringing rain shown by this green and yellow shade and blue shading over southwest England and uh, parts of Ireland, parts of Wales. But on its leading edge, there's a period of snow and it really is very uncertain about the extent of that snow risk at this stage um, and just how quickly uh, this mild rare is going to progress northeastwards. I'll continue the sequence just a little further and we're going here into Monday the 15th of February, 00 GMT. By this stage you can see snow is being shown across eastern and northern parts of uh, Britain. But mild air is returning across Wales, Northern Ireland, southwestern areas, and much of southern England. So, so the mild air is progressing reasonably steady, steadily northeastwards. Just to play this through to the end. And here we go, 21 GMT on uh, Monday the 15th of February. By then, the milder air has returned actually to all parts of the United Kingdom, even, even to uh, Scotland. So this particular model run is suggesting a transition taking place through the first weekend of the forecast period, or at least by the Monday uh, following it, with, with mild drag getting into all parts of the United Kingdom. That is very uncertain at this stage. OK, I'll show a few charts to illustrate why things are uncertain. This one is from Monday the 8th of February. It's the 12Z GFS model run, and it was valid for 15 GMT Monday the 15th of February. What it shows is the mild air struggling to push northwards of Northern Ireland, Wales and central parts of England. In fact, the run went on to show the cold air moving back southwestwards across all parts of the country and becoming re-established as, as high pressure over Scandinavia was the dominant feature. It was actually quite representative of a number of model runs which were generated around about this time. The thing that has changed has been really today, we've seen a trend towards the computer models bringing through the mild air more quickly. 
This chart is from a European model. It was generated on Tuesday the 9th of February. It's valid again for Monday the 15th of February. So, so effectively it's, it's, it was generated 12 hours later than the previous one. And it's showing, even by then, the less cold or the mild air has pushed right across the United Kingdom. And the cold block over here, which I'll highlight, has been shoved back into uh, continental Europe, into Scandinavia. And in fact, by then, we've, we've even got some yellows and oranges beginning to appear to the southwest of the UK, which do indicate mild upper level air. Go to the next slide, which is from the Canadian GEM model. It was also generated on uh, Tuesday the 9th of February. It shows there are differences, but it's essentially a similar picture with the less cold air getting across all of the United Kingdom by Monday the 15th of February. Um, so, so, so again, that would suggest a relatively quick transition to a more uh, milder, somewhat Atlantic-driven pattern. Next one up is today's GFS 06 model run. Um, and again, it's, it's a similar story. It's bringing the milder air up from the southwest. So, so it has been quite a big change in the computer model output during the last 12 or 24 hours. Previously, most of the models were suggesting the cold block would be uh, remaining um, over the UK, at least over central and eastern parts of Britain, and then it would actually push back westwards through the course of the, uh, through the, course of the middle part of February. Today's updates are much more oriented towards bringing in milder conditions, and, but, but because of that change, it does highlight the uncertainty. I'll bring up the 16-day plots. This is for London. It's generated from the GEFS uh, 06Z model run on Tuesday the 9th of February. On the top part, it shows upper air temperatures. The thick black line going right across indicates a 30-year mean. And what we can see in the short term is it's a very cold picture. Um, virtually all of the runs there are at or below minus 10, which is a good indicator for deep cold um, in the UK. By the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, a trend upwards is pretty evident there. And by Valentine's Day, the mean of all the runs in the GEFS are back at the uh, is it's back at the 30 year average it then climbs a little bit above it and it stays there right until the end of this model run on the 25th of february so milder i've put some question marks here because had i shown the same chart which had been generated from yesterday's data you would have seen the cold period being extended for a couple of days two or three days longer so, so it has been truncated quite a lot in the last 12 or 24 hours. And when that happens, there's always a good deal of uncertainty. When you see, when you see a sort of flip from one, one solution to another, it, it highlights things are very uncertain and they could easily uh, tip back in the other direction in subsequent model updates. Uh, just to continue a little bit with this, taking that caveat into account, it shows an increase in risk of rain from about 15th of February onwards. And it is rain rather than snow, because what we can see is the snow row initially is 33, 32. The absolute maximum it can be is 33. So those numbers are very, very high. It then drops back down to about 550 during the middle part of the month as that milder air comes in. What those things suggest is a greater Atlantic influence returning. So to see if that's the case, let's just jump across to Cardiff in the west, because that's where that's going to uh, feel the Atlantic before eastern parts of the United Kingdom do. And indeed, the upper air temperature profile is quite similar, so I won't dwell on it. But we can see with precipitation, there are more spikes, more rain spikes appearing on this plot than there were on the London one. So it suggests a wetter picture. And that's what we would expect as the Atlantic begins to push in. It has more influence on western parts of the UK than, than, than eastern parts. <coughs> if we quickly go up to Edinburgh, 
again, it's very, very similar on the 850 HPA temperature profile at the top here. Very similar story with those milder conditions returning around, around, around about Valentine's Day. The precipitation forecast is more akin to the one on the London than Cardiff chart. That's probably because Edinburgh being in the east of the UK is not going to be as exposed to the Atlantic influence as Cardiff is. So it, it's reasonably consistent. These three charts are consistent with each other. They are less consistent with the updates which were published yesterday. I think it's also worth taking a quick look at the pressure forecasts. This is the 16-day uh, data table from the GEFS 6 z model. It is showing uh, pressure from all of the runs in the ensemble model. It's actually for York, which I thought I would use because it's fairly central. But far more importantly, it's my hometown or home city. Um, what it shows is that in the short term, Tuesday the 9th, Wednesday the 10th of February, 100% of the runs fall into this yellow column, which is uh, forecasting pressure to be between 1,011 millibars and 1,025 millibars. By the 11th, we actually see all of the runs go into the next bracket, the orange one, which is 1,026 millibars to 1,040 millibars. But through the sort of middle part of February, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th there, going right through to the 19th or 20th, 21st, there's a slightly increased number of runs bringing in somewhat lower pressure. We can see the, the green column indicates between 996 millibars and 1,010. By the 15th, it's 3%, but then it climbs to about 10% by the 19th and the 20th of February. There's even a couple of blues uh, in, appearing in there, which, which is the next bracket down, which is 981 to 995 millibars. What this is suggesting is that in the medium term, there's possibly, possibly a sort of weak trend towards lower pressure maybe, but it's not a strong trend. So it's it's it would really probably be saying that that Atlantic influence isn't going to be very, very strong. In fact, on balance, high pressure is going to continue to be influential, um, as and it may well be, it's likely to be centered to the east and the, uh, the northeast of Britain. Again, it adds credence to the theory that we're going to be pretty close to that border between the cold continental block and the milder Atlantic air mass, which, which is going to be trying to push right across the UK. So it really it really flags up the uncertainty and it, it suggests how small changes to those pressure blocks could well have very big impacts on the weather which we experience in the UK during the middle and second half of February. Just take a very, very quick peek at the 35-day 2-metre temperature plot for London. I think it's just worth looking at the longer-term picture which it was showing, and that is for the 2-metre uh, temperatures, those are the ones we experience down at the surface, to be close to the 30-year mean through much of the second half of February. So it would suggest, at least on phase value, that once the milder conditions get back in, which it's saying they will do, they quite possibly will be uh, staying with us through the rest of the month. Now I'm just going to throw a spanner into the works there. Um, I think it's important to do so at this point, and that is to say that this is averaging out all of the runs in the model. And therefore, we could have a number showing very cold conditions and a number showing very mild conditions. In this instance, I actually think that's quite likely to be the case, at least more so than is usually uh, than, than usually you would expect. So there's a good deal of uncertainty in the medium term weather prospects. That has often been the case so far this winter. It's probably because mild and cold air masses have both been close to the UK, but neither one has become dominant. Nonetheless, I'll try and summarise things. During week one, it's a very cold start with snow showers, mostly in eastern parts of Britain. Nighttime frosts will be severe and widespread. 
Later on, Mild Rare begins trying to return from the Atlantic, but there's a good deal of uncertainty about the timing and progression of it. Until about 24 hours before this forecast was issued, most computer models were shown Mild Rare making limited inroads and then being pushed back westwards. Now the trend has been for most of them to take the uh, mild air through a lot more quickly. Um, indeed, across all parts of the UK by the middle of the month. Nonetheless, I think that level of confidence is very low and it's quite possible the computer models could flip back towards a colder scenario during the uh, second half of February. But as things stand, milder conditions are being favoured during week two of the forecast period, with the wettest weather likely to be in the west. So that's pretty much it. But if you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please do remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks very much for watching now. Bye.